Hey everyone, it's John here. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at how we can create a text to column function with dynamic arrays. So I've got a comma separated list of data here. And if I wanna get each of those items in my list into a separate cell, then we can do that in the data tab. There's actually a command text to columns that's going to allow us to separate our data based on a delimiter. And we can also do that in Power Query. There's also a split columns functionality there that allows us to do that. But in this video, we're gonna take a look at how we can do that with dynamic arrays. So the function that we're gonna build is gonna be quite long. So we're gonna do it in steps. And definitely this is more just for fun. So if you actually wanna separate out data, definitely use text columns or Power Query to do that. So the first step we're gonna do is we're gonna to need to get our list minus our delimiter. And we're gonna use the substitute function to do that. So that's gonna allow us to substitute a piece of text for another piece of text. So we're going to substitute inside of this text and we're going to find our delimiter. And then we're gonna replace it with an empty string and so here's our list of data minus those commas. And now based on this, we can actually get a count of how many items we have in our comma separated list. And we can do that with the length function. So this is gonna allow us to count how many characters a piece of text has. So if we take how many characters this has minus how many characters this has, then that's gonna give us our item count. And it's actually just the count of how many delimiters we had. If we actually want how many items we have, we need to add one to that. And there we go. We now have a count of four. And notice, we, yep, we have four items in our list. And next, we're gonna use the sequence function. So we eventually wanna spill results into separate columns. And in order to spill, we're gonna to need to use the sequence function to do that. So this is gonna allow us to create a sequence of values. And what we wanna do is create a sequence from one to four. In this case, we have four items. So we want a sequence of four numbers. And just to save space right now, I'm gonna be spilling down the rows, but eventually we'll take a look at spilling across the columns as well. So we want a sequence of four rows. And if we just enter that, what we get is, is our sequence from one to four. And now we're gonna use this to get each of our delimiter locations. So the location of each of those commas in our data here. And to do that, we're gonna use the find function. And if we find our delimiter inside our list of data, and we're gonna get a six. So you can see that this first comma here is the sixth character in our text string here. But the find function is only gonna allow me to find the first instance of something inside of a text string. So in order to find the second and third instance of that comma, what I need to do is use the substitute function. So instead of finding the comma inside my data list, what we're gonna do is create a new list using the substitute function. And so we're gonna substitute in our data list and we're gonna try and find our delimiter. And we're gonna substitute it with a new character that's not in our data. So I'm gonna use the pipe function for that. And notice the substitute function has an optional argument here, which is the instance number. So this is gonna allow me to substitute just the first comma here with my pipe character, or just the second comma here with my pipe character. So let's just find the first instance. And 
And actually, instead of our delimiter now, because we're substituting our delimiter for this pipe character, what we actually want to search for with the find function is the pipe character. Let's add that in there. And there we go, we get six for our first one. And now what we can do, instead of just referencing the first number in our sequence here, we can use the number sign after to reference the entire dynamic array. And now we get a list of the location of each of those commas. So this is the sixth character and the 15th character and the 20th character here. Now, we're also going to take this same function and we're just gonna offset it. So instead of starting at six, we're going to subtract one from our sequence. And now we've got something that's just offset from our original set of delimiter locations. And you can see that we've got these two value errors here. And we're going to use an if error function to get rid of those. In the last value here, what I actually want is the total length in terms of characters of my list of data. So we're going to use the length function to get that. And let's press enter. And here for this error, what I want is a zero instead. And now with these two arrays here, what we can do is use the mid function to extract the text that we want. So the mid function allows us to return the middle set of a text string given a starting position and a number of characters to return. So we're going to return stuff from our original text and we're going to start at our first character. So we need to add one to that. And then we're going to return the first five characters here. And that needs to be a minus one. So here we've got our first piece of text. And if we now reference our entire dynamic arrays here, let's just add a number sign to the end of that to reference our entire dynamic array. Then you can see that what we get is those individual values spilling down our rows. Now let's see if we can take this and turn it into a single big mega formula here. And we wanna be referencing that guy there. And let's take that. And let's replace those. And let's copy this. And instead of this sequence going across the rows, here's where I'm going to change this. So I'm going to have it go across the columns. And let's copy that. And replace all those instances of it in my formula. 
All right, so now we get it spilling across the columns. And let's take a copy of this. And replace it in our formula. And replace each of those. And let's just finally adjust all these references here down. And you can see there's quite a few of those references. And there we go, we've got a text to column function that's going to dynamically convert our list of items into columns based on some delimiter. And I just noticed that I've cut off my S here. And that's because if I come up here, what I actually need is the length plus one. And let's just make the same adjustment in this formula. So if I come up here and add one, so that's how we can create a text to column function with dynamic arrays. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel. That's it for this video. See you in the next one.